I think that um, working on camera that you don't need to worry about projecting your energy to an audience you don't have to focus on um, you know the, the audience being in the back row or, or having to extend your energy that far it kind of deals mainly with a level of intimacy knowing that the camera is only a certain distance away from you therefore the audience are much closer to you uh, and I think it's also having the, the sort of the knowledge that the camera will pick up every thought every you know feeling every breath every subtlety which which won't necessarily happen on stage on screen you have to be thinking it and feeling it and really living it completely in order for the camera to think it's truthful. I think the actual preparation stages are the same for me, you know, as far as creating a role and researching a character, but the main difference in, I guess, performance is time. You know, on, on, on TV you have a lot less time. Um, certain TV shows that I've worked on, you know, you might shoot 20 scenes in a day. And so you literally have one or two takes per scene and then you're moving on to the next one. Whereas on film, you know, I've, I just finished a film not long ago where we would shoot half a scene in a whole day. You know, I've just finished working with someone who I had immense respect for and we had a lot of trust between us. And I think that that, was, that enables me as an actor to be as free as I can to make choices that maybe I normally wouldn't if I didn't feel that same connection with, with the director. You know, and I think that it's, it, film, it's a, you know, it's a true collaboration. It's, it's between you and the director and the writer and the crew and all those different elements. I mean, without, without all of those elements, the, the whole, you know, project of a film or a TV series would fall apart. Mm. So I think that that's the most important one, is the collaboration between actor and director, and certainly between, in between the actors themselves. But, um, yeah, it can make or break a product. I, don't, I, I believe every character lives with inside, of, inside of you somewhere, but some obviously are further away from you, which means you have to dig deeper and, and actually do a lot more research and get a lot more information about that character sort of outside of yourself. Um, but I, it always has to, I mean, especially on screen, it always has to be your breath and your voice and your heartbeat and your ideas. And um, So I think that, you know, those opportunities that you have where you can actually look a long way outside of yourself are really enjoyable. Um, but certainly television in this country, I feel you have to have a really good understanding of who you are because most of the time you're cast according to your type. You know, so it's important that you have a good knowledge of what you are and what you appear as on screen and what sort of energy you have that comes across because that's pretty much what you're going to get hired for. Mm. The first job I did was, was working on a film and I, the, the technical elements uh, on screen, you know, simple things like hitting marks and frame sizes of the camera and just the the general close proximity of the crew members and all the technical you know, equipment and, and the busyness of, on a set which needs to happen while you're focused on this, this, this one scene. I mean, I found that quite confronting, you know. Um, and the use of space, which I was talking about before, I found that, you know, I was used to working in a theatre where the use of space needed to be much broader, it needed to open out to a, a theatrical audience. So the idea of having to only basically speak to one person and communicate with one person that was quite confronting and something I hadn't really experienced and it took a little while to, to get used to. Well, I think it's a combination of, you know, literally talking from your own experiences so that people know that what you're, what you're saying to them, what you're trying to educate them with, what you're trying to pass on to them is, is, are things that I do once I get a script and step onto a set and start working in that environment. You know, I think it's, I really believe it's pointless sort of talking out of an exercise book saying that read page five and you know, that will give you all the, all the ideas. I think if it comes from the person with truth and I'm very passionate about my work and about what I pass on to people, I think that, that, um, that creates, a, again, like a, a level of trust between you and the students. Um, how else do I do it? You know, I think that I've now been in enough situations through my working career on film and television that I guess nine times out of ten, the questions that are asked, me, asked of me, I can relate relate it back to a professional experience in some way, you know. And sometimes it is a matter of getting up and, and um, uh, you know, getting involved in a scene with someone and kind of saying, well, this is, this is you know, describing it in a physical sense rather than just it being words. Mm. Um, well, I would take them through uh, those elements that I was just talking about, certainly characterization elements, you know, script analysis, how to pull a script apart, what to, what to expect working with a director in the sense of what sort of questions will be asked of you, what sort of preparation is required of you to turn up and certainly audition for a character, but then once you get the job, you know, what's expected of you and how much work and how much preparation is involved in that. And then really getting up and doing it, you know, getting more and more confidence, even in the five days on screen, and that just, that is 
purely and simply by getting up and shooting scenes um, and then reviewing the work, you know, analysing the work, going through that horrible process of watching yourself on screen and you know, seeing all your, all your faults and problems and issues and, and all the good stuff that comes out of it as well and really being able to analyse it in a technical sense. Yeah, look, I think that NIDA, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I experienced here when I was training here, when I was studying here, is that it, you know, there are le there's a level of, of, there's a standard that NIDA sets and it sort of, it never really drops below that and they're constantly trying to push that standard higher and higher and higher and I think that, that not only comes through in the, in the full-time school, it, it, it resonates throughout the part-time courses as well because all the tutors are graduates of NIDA in some way and so they've had that instilled into them and so the people who come in to do a five-day course or a six-week course will have that attitude passed on to them, that professionalism, which I think you can't buy that, you know. I mean, it doesn't matter how much money you, you pay, you, that's something that's ingrained in the training of this school.